Hello to all the viewers and learners of NIOS. I am Yush Prashad, academic officer together with me, there is Mrs. Uma Sanjay Singh Hello. who is associate professor in Delhi University are going to discuss on the topic ratio analysis. Learners, as you know that in our earlier programs we have tried to explain you the liquidity ratio, solvency ratio, activity ratio and the leverage ratio. Now the thing that is left aside under the topic of ratio analysis is the profitability ratio. Learners, as a student you are very eager to know the results of your business just after the examination. It is not only the result which you would like to know whether you have been passed or failed but side by side you are also interested in knowing that what is your performance level in comparison to the efforts that has been made by you for your examination. The same is the case with the businessman. Businessman has taken a lot of risk. He has invested the capital in a business. He has borrowed the money from various sources and has performed the number of activities throughout the year. Once the financial year of the business is completed, now he is interested in knowing the results of his business. That is how much profit he has earned and or how much losses he has suffered. Simply knowing the profit or loss through the profit and loss account is not sufficient. He wants a comparison with the sales made by him throughout the year with the capital that has been invested by him in the business. He would like to compare his gross profit with the net profit. He would like to compare his operating profit in comparison to the sales made by him and so on. This all could be done with the help of the profitability ratio. So normally a ratio which is known as a profitability ratio is calculated to know the results of the business that has been earned by way of the gross profit or net profit and by making it comparable with some another financial aspects of the business which may be sales or any other kind of things. Today we are going to discuss on this topic in detail together with the limitations that we are basically going to face in the ratio analysis. So we are first going to start up with the meaning that what do we exactly mean by the term profitability ratio and what are the different type of ratio that are going to be covered under the topic profitability ratio. Madam, please explain our learners something about it. A very important objective of business is to earn profit. So profit forms the basis of any business for its survival and growth. Therefore, profitability ratios is an important set of ratios which measures the operating efficiency and performance of the business over a period of time. Now generally, they are expressed as a percentage to either sales or to the capital employed. And we have to study four different sets of ratios under this gross profit ratio, net profit ratio, operating profit ratio and return on investment ratios. Learners, as the madam has now told you ki we are going to have the profitability ratio in four different type of categories which are basically the gross profit ratio, net profit ratio, operating ratio and the return on investment. I am going to explain you the topic basically the gross profit ratio. I hope you know what is exactly the term gross profit. It is something that we are going to have a direct profit for the business which means that if we have got some sales and if we have got the cost of goods sold. If the cost of goods sold are deducted from the net sales that the net outcome is known as to be the gross profit. That is another way of calculation for this is that we are going to take opening stock plus purchases plus all direct expenses minus closing stock then we are going to get cost of goods sold and the same methodology can be adopted for calculating the gross profit. Now the businessman is interested in knowing through the trading account that how much gross profit he has earned. Once the gross profit is known now he is going to compare his gross profit with the net sales of the business. This comparison is going to give him the direct percentage of the profit in the business in comparison to the sales. Now you know gross profit is basically a ratio which establishes a relationship between the gross profit and the net sales of the business. When we basically take its significance, it indicates the funds available to cover operating expenses, fixed charges and the margin available. This means that how much profit is available with you so that you can cover the indirect expenses because all indirect expenses which are going to cover under the category of the profit and loss account should be met from the gross profit only. If there is no gross profit, we cannot expect for meeting out all those expenses. So gross profit is going to become a base 
to cover all those kind of expenses. When we basically talk of a formula for gross profit ratio, the formula is very simple. It is simply gross profit divided by net sales into 100. I have already taught, explained over here that how the gross profit is going to be calculated. It is simply net sales minus cost of goods sold. When we are going to take net sales, it simply means that from sales we are going to deduct the sales return. That is whatever be the value of the goods we have sold and if any sales is going to be returned by the customer, we are going to deduct it and the outcome is going to be net sales. When we basically take off a standard ratio, there is no such kind of standards which are made for it. But it is very simple to say that higher the ratio, the better it would be. The more you are going to have the gross profit, the better is going to show for a business. I will explain you in much more detail with the concept of this thing. Now, to be take an example. Suppose the sales of the business is 3,25,000 and our sales return are 25,000 while the cost of goods sold is 240,000. As I have already told that net sales is going to be calculated from sales minus sales return. So, net sales is going to be 3 lakh rupees which is 3,25,000 minus 25,000. To calculate the gross profit, we apply a formula net sales minus cost of goods sold. So, from 3 lakh, we are going to deduct 2,40,000 and the net outcome going to be 60,000. Now, we apply it into a formula which says that gross profit ratio is equal to gross profit divided by net sales into 100. This way, 60,000 divided by 3 lakhs into 100 comes out to be 20 percent. So, this 20 percent is considered as to be the gross profit for the business in comparison to the total sales made by them. It is very simple to say that if the total sales is 100 rupees out of that 20 rupees is the gross profit. Now, this gross profit is going to work as a base to cover the rest of the expenses which are going to be made in the business. Now, we come on to the net profit ratio. Madam, please explain our learners something related to the net profit ratio. Okay. Once the gross profit is calculated, the next step in financial statements also comes to prepare the profit and loss account that gives us the net profit. So, the second ratio net profit ratio establishes the relationship between the net profit to net sales. This is also expressed as a percentage. Now, we are finally interested in finding out that what is the proportion available to the final owners, to the shareholders or we can say because from gross profit when you deduct all the administrative expenses, the selling and distribution expenses and other forms of losses, the final part that is available is the part that goes to the owners. So, yeah, what is the… I would like to intervene that once the gross profit is there with us, can you quote some example that what are the items that will be added to the gross profit and what are the items that are going to be deducted from the gross profit to get the net profit? Okay. Now, when you have to compute your net profit, you take first of all the gross profit. From that, you subtract the operating expenses which includes your administrative expenses and the selling and distribution expenses minus all kinds of other operating losses and plus to that you add your non-operating incomes. That figure which comes out that is referred to as the net profit. Net profit and means. when you divide it by net sales that gives us the net profit ratio. There is no standard ratio to uh, measure the net profit ratio. The higher the ratio the better it is because if it is higher that means you are getting more margin for your shareholders or the owners the less of course then operating efficiency of the business uh, suffers. As you know learners that gross profit is going to be calculated from the trading account. After this, we are going to prepare a profit and loss account which would help us in ascertaining the net profit of the business. So, net profit is the only outcome which is going to increase or decrease the value of the capital in a business. In case if there is net loss, then we cannot calculate the net profit ratio, it will be net loss ratio and it is going to decrease our capital for the business. Madam, can you quote some example or illustration with the help of which we can make it much more clear how do we calculate this net profit ratio. Okay. Now, net profit ratio is computed as net profit upon net sales multiplied by 100 because we have to express it as a percentage. Let me take an example to explain this. Let us suppose that the net profit to the business is 45,000. The total sales made during the year are 640,000. The sales return have been 40,000. So, now net profit is already defined to us. So, we need not worry about it. Net sales would be the sales minus the sales return. So, 6,40,000 minus 40,000 that gives us 6 lakh. So, net profit 45,000 divided by net sales which is 6 lakhs multiplied by 100 and you get 7.5 percent. Supposing the total sales made are of rupees 100, then rupees 7.5 is the amount that finally goes to the owners. Okay. Now, learners, 
I am going to explain you in a much more a differential way. Suppose a business earns a gross loss, there is no gross profit. Do you expect that same kind of business may earn a net profit? It is possible because as we have already told you that gross profit is simply a kind of deduction from the sales minus cost of goods sold. But if that business is not going to have that much of sales and the cost of goods sold is going to be high, definitely in that case the result will not be the gross profit, it will be a gross loss. On the other hand, if the same kind of business is going to have different type of activities where they are going to get the various kinds of incomes that are not directly related to the business, but somehow or another they are going to be added to the profit and loss account like a discount received, commission received, rent received, interest on investment is going to be received, some kind of investment is made by them from where they are going to get the dividend. If all these things are going to be higher, then finally the gross profit can be converted into a net profit. So, there is a possibility ki even though a business is earning a gross loss, they can earn a net profit. But as we know ki business earning a gross profit can directly be converted into a net loss in case if their indirect expenses are going to be higher. In case if the indirect expenses are that much in proportion that they are not able to cover the cost of the gross profit, then in that case the business has to suffer a net loss. So, finally, gross profit is basically a direct profit for a business and net profit is a final outcome normally which is going to be added to the capital of the business and up to some extent it is considered as to be the distributable profit for some business. In other cases, they may have some more appropriation if they would like to make some reserves that are going to be made out of the net profit only. If they want to keep a part of the profit aside for some future provisions and so on that is going to be also made from the net profit. So, net profit is the final outcome which is going to be added or deducted from the capital the way the businessman wants. Now, once the net profit is clear to you, now the terms come for the return on investment. No, before Madam, that I think we will hmm. discuss the operating ratio because that okay. is also in continuation with gross profit and net profit. Fine, fine. F absolutely, okay. absolutely. So, now operating profit ratio as the name suggests that you are determining the relationship between operating profit to the total sales. Now, operating profit means the net results of the operation. What is the business dealing with? What is the business doing? What has been the net results of the operation? So, the formula again is similar to what we have discussed in uh, gross profit or net profit. So, it is operating profit upon net sales in 200 and the purpose of calculating the operating ratio is to judge the overall efficiency of the operations of the business. But how is this operating profit determined? It is actually you club or you take the sum total of administrative expenses and the selling and distribution expenses and this sum total when deducted from the gross profit, this gives you the operating profit. And the higher the ratio, the better it would be for the business because if the operating profit increases simultaneously, the impact on the net profit also increases. And when the net profit increases, of course, we have discussed earlier also that it gives more gross margin to the uh, owners or to the proprietors. Now, learners, as I have right now told you, ki there can be a gross profit in a business, but finally it could be converted into a net loss mm -hmm. in case if the indirect expenses are more. more yeah. So, this is one of the very important issue for each and every businessman where they would exactly like to know ki what are the profit they are earning from their business operations. There are a number of activities which are performed by the businessman other than the business activities. So, this is going to give you the profit with the help of gross profit itself as the madam has told you right now that from the gross profit if we only deduct the administrative and selling expenses then we are going to get the operating profit. So, it will establish a relationship between the business activities and the net sales. If this is the sales we have made and these are the operations we have done. So, with that way we can establish key as exactly this is the profit we are earning from our business operations. As I have already told you there can be number of activities performed by the business other than the business itself. Like I have told you he has received the rent. A particular businessman is going to have a big business complex. He has kept two shops for his own business while rest of the eight or ten shops he has given on a rent basis. His business is not running that much successfully, but he is getting quite a good sum of money by way of rent. Now, all these things is going to increase his net profit, but this amount is not exactly the amount which he has earned from the business operations. There can be another example. Like there is certain assets available in a business which are old, discarded, which he has purchased for some amount. 
now he is going to sold those assets at some profit a piece of land is going to be sold in a market at a profit a portion of the building can be sold in a market at a profit which is going to increase his overall profit and that by that way the net profit will increase but this is not the part of his business operations so when we are going to take the operating ratio at that time we are simply going to take all those things that is the expenses which are basically related to the operations of the business so be very careful from gross profit you are simply going to deduct selling distribution and administrative expenses which are necessary to meet out the business operations madam is going to explain you with the help of an example or illustration that how exactly this thing is going to work okay let us take an example to see how this operating profit is calculated let us say that the sales for the firm are 3 lakh rupees the gross profit are 1 lakh 20000 administrative expenses amounts to 35000 selling and distribution expenses turns out to be 25000 loss by fire is 9000 defined the computation of operating profit ratio will require the calculations for operating profit and your net sales so operating profit would be the gross profit that is 120000 minus the administrative expenses and minus the selling and distribution expenses so 120000 minus 30000 Minus twenty five thousand. That gives us sixty thousand. Loss by fire is not an operational expense because this is not a route. It's a accidental loss, so it is not a part of the operating expenditure performed by the business. So we will not include this uh, operational uh, expenses. So we get sixty thousand as the amount for the operating profit. The sales are predefined. In case sales return were also given to us, so we would have taken the total sales minus the sales return because so we have be yes, it would be deducted. As per the yes, as per the formula. So you have net sales of three uh, lakh already predefined in the question. So sixty thousand upon three lakh multiplied by hundred. This gives us twenty percent. So of the total sales made, twenty percent accounts for your operating profit. profit. Learners, now we have explained you three things. One is a gross profit ratio, second is a net profit ratio, and third is a operating, operating profit. profit ratio. Now it's the time to come to explain you about the return on investment. Whenever a businessman is going to invest a money in a business, he is interested in knowing that exactly how much return he is getting on his investment. For a layman, we can say that this business is performing very well. Fine, they are performing very well. But have you ever compared the amount of efforts made by them to earn that profit? the amount of capital they have invested in a business to earn that profit if we compare with that we may came to know that business performance is not up to the mark suppose you study for an hour and you get 50% marks it's fine if you study for 10 hours and you are simply getting the same 50% marks are you going to be satisfied no never because the investment or the labor which you have made in your studies is going to be much more in comparison to the marks which you have scored similarly the businessman is interested in knowing that the amount of capital he has invested in a business in comparison to that how much profit he is earning now when we are basically talking of the amount of capital it doesn't means that the amount which he has invested of his own it also includes the long term loans which he has taken which are going to be repaid after a long period of time so these are all the matters to be taken into consideration which we are going to explain you right now the last ratio under the context of profitability ratio is the return on investment or return on capital employed or net profit to capital employed under this as the name suggests return on investment that means what is the net profit available on the total investment or the total capital which the business has invested in the overall operation this is what we are trying to determine through the return on investment herein we establish the relationship between the net profit to be more precise this is net profit before interest tax and dividend to the total capital employed so here the learner is going to be very very careful that without making the payment of interest before making the payment of taxes before making, making the payment dividend. of dividend the, what is the net profit the actual available profit is available they have to take into consideration for yes. calculation so of this ratio so if at all in the question it is given net profit after interest tax and dividend you have to add, add back, back the interest tax and dividend then only you will get the numerator as uh, exactly, this net exactly. profit before interest tax and dividend and then upon the capital employed Uh, multiplied by hundred because this has to be expressed as a percentage to the capital employed. So this is how this ratio uh, 
goes and then how do we calculate the yes, capital now, employed now how do we calculate the capital employed now capital employed means the total amount of investment made into the business this can be computed either from the liability side of the balance sheet or from the asset side of the balance sheet depending upon the information that is provided to us in the question so if we go by the liability side of the balance sheet so you start with the equity share capital plus preference share capital plus the reserves and surpluses plus all the long term loans that you've taken from banks and financial institutions minus the fictitious assets minus non operating assets and this gives you the capital employed or otherwise you can also compute it from the asset side of the balance sheet so this would mean the net fixed assets which is the total fixed assets minus depreciation and plus the working capital that is current assets minus current liabilities so there are two different ways as the madam has told you that you can take the liability side all together all the long term liabilities can be taken together with the capital or you can take the total assets minus current liability that is another way of calculating the, the capital, capital employed. employed now to take an example of return on investment how this ratio is computed let us say that the total share capital for the firm is 160000 reserves and surpluses are 60000 loan at the rate of 15% interest is given as 2 lakh sales are 5 lakh 60000 the total tax liability is 40000 and profit after interest and tax are defined as 80000 the interest amount would be calculated at 15% because there is a loan that is being taken from the financial institution so 15% of 2 lakh turns out to be 30000 and plus the taxes have been paid to an extent of 40000 so you add back this to the uh, the Net profit profits. profit figures that is given to us so 80000 plus 30000 plus 40000 this turns out to be 150000 upon the total uh, capital employed which includes your share capital reserves and surpluses and the total loans which accounts for 420000 multiplied by 100 and this gives us a figure of 36 percent in this manner that if the total capital employed has been let's say rupees 100 so rupees 36 is the total net profit generated on the total capital employed of rupees 100 now i've got a doubt suppose yes. nothing is given in a question ki whether it's a profit before tax or after tax then what is uh, from a student point of view from the learner's point what are they going to consider in that regard in that regard you go accordingly you will not have i mean if nothing is specified then we take the net profit figure as it is okay like the tax is also given in the question, the percentage of interest is also given on a loan and this is simply profit, profit for the year is so and so. Then in that case, I hope this yes, profit yes. itself if, is… If the interest amount is also defined, tax amount is also defined, then we assume that this profit that is given to us is net profit after interest tax and dividend. So, you have to again add back the interest and, and tax. And they should give a note while solving yes. the question, ki we have, this is a presumption they have made. So that there may be not a loss on their part, ki they are going to lose a mark. So it all depends upon your presumption. But in normally, uh, during the examination, it is very very clarified ki whether it's a before the taxes or after the taxes. Each and everything is given. Okay. Now once you are able to know the return on investment and its importance, ki this is basically the amount of profit which the businessman is going to earn on the total investment made by him in the business, which includes not only his capital but also the part of the loan which he has taken from an outside of the business and is going to be repaid after a long period of time. Now, it is the time to come to know the limitations of the ratios. As you know, okay, this is a man-made kind of thing. This ratio analysis is not a natural science. We are the one those who have for our own convenience have generated this kind of things. So, now there are some limitations and as you know, okay, these are the good points. You should also be aware of the limitations related to the ratios. Madam, can you throw some light on the limitations of the ratio analysis? Okay. Now, we have discussed the uh, different types of ratios that are used for the purpose of judging the uh, financial statements and in fact, ratio analysis is, is an important technique of uh, analyzing your financial statement. But in spite of the importance that is there, in spite of the fact that we have different varieties of uh, ratios to judge the overall efficiency, but still there are certain lacumas, there are certain disadvantages, there are certain limitations which this ratio analysis uh, contains. The very important limitation which this ratio analysis uh, gives us is that it ignores the qualitative aspect. These ratios are computed on the quantitative information. So, they are in terms of numerical relationships. They do not give us the qualitative aspects which the business 
might have. So, the first limitation which these ratio analysis has is that it ignores the qualitative aspects. These ratios are based on the quantitative figures, numerical figures. They do not tell anything about the quality of business. It could have a very good goodwill. The technology that it is using could be the best among the industry. I think this is one of the very common limitations which we are going to face in our accounting also. Absolutely. It is not only a part no, of the ratio, yeah, not only a part but this of is ratio. a limitation of the accounting itself that it does not specify anything related to the quality or the quantity. Because when we talk about profitability, we talk about uh, the efficiency of the resources, we do not talk about these aspects of the qualitative nature, the location, the goodwill, uh, the competent and trained workforce which the business has. So, all these aspects also somewhere or the other contributes to the overall efficiency, Definitely. contributes to the profitability which are totally uh, ignored when we uh, talk about the ratio analysis. Another important limitation is the it ignores the price level changes. So, when you are making comparison of these ratios with the previous years, so if supposing uh, in during the previous year the profitability was this much and it has increased over the current year. Now, that increase we attribute okay the business was doing very well of the overall efficiency is good, but it is also a possibility that the profit has shot up because of the inflation rate. So, this inflation aspect the price level changes has not been incorporated when you are analyzing the ratios for the uh, current year and we cannot solely contribute it to the efficiency with which the resources are being used. So, this is another important uh, uh, limitation. Then there is no single criteria to measure the uh, concepts available. When you talk about profitability, it does not specify that which profits are you talking about. Is it net profit before tax? Is or it net profit tax. after tax? Are we going to uh, take only on the basis of gross profit or are we going to comment on the net profit? And the each and every case the answer is answer going is to be so different every and all business, of them are considered yes, as All correct. business firms follows according to their own uh, practices and as a result when you have to make a comparison between intra firm comparison then this kind of uh, these concepts do not serve the actual uh, purpose. Also these ratios can sometimes give us misleading results if they are not based on accurate information because you are actually using the financial statements which are already been prepared. So, if these financial statements are inaccurately prepared, let us say the inventory had been in over inflated or uh, the uh, profits were inflated. So, as a result these kind of impacts would be there in the ratio analysis as well and of course, then your ratio analysis would not give us the true picture which we are trying to it's something determine. like you give and give out cases if you put a garbage in you are going to get Absolutely, the garbage out. Yes. So, uh, we have gone through lots many kind of things there are number of more limitations, but because of constant of time we are resting ourselves up to these four limitations only, but there can be many more. So, learners you have already came to know all different type of ratios as we have told the ratios are divided into five different type of categories each and every category of the ratio is going to have its sub parts. So, now you are aware exactly what is the ratio is, what are the significance of each and every ratio, what is the formula we are going to use at the time of calculating the ratio and side by side we have told you the standards of the ratio. In some of the cases the standards are not given to us exact. So, what we have taken is we have taken higher or the lower as the base. I hope all these things are going to be very very useful to you while solving your problems through the self learning material. Now, I am going to pay the thanks to madam for being here with us and providing the useful information to our learners. Learners, uh, you are going to be much more benefited by viewing this program and getting the benefit out of it. Thank you very much ma'am. Thank you. के हर कोने में नौजवानों के पास प्रतिभा है उन्हें अवसर चाहिए NIOS देता रहा है युवाओं को अवसर आगे बढ़ने का NIOS से पढ़ने वाले इन युवाओं ने किया है संस्थान को गौरवान्वित दिव्यांगों ने बनके दिखाया है सबल और आत्मनिर्भर NIOS के साथ आप भी जुड़िए NIOS के संग